go to patreon.com slash tiltedtripodmedia. Support this channel by becoming a member and unlock the future of video. Click that subscribe button and smash that bell icon. Yeah! Welcome back to another episode of Try This and the very first acrylic painting video. On today's episode, we'll be doing an acrylic pour with bubble wrap. So basically what we're going to do is take this bubble wrap, lay it down, put the paints on it, and then you lay your canvas flat down on it, putting pressure on it so all the paint sticks to the canvas from the bubble wrap. So I wanted to see what the colors would look like dried, so I put them on this little piece of paper and let them dry, and here's what they look like. So here are the names of the colors in case you would like to try out this color combination. First, we have Primary Red. Then we're going to do Crimson Red. And then we have this uh, Pumpkin Orange color. Bright Yellow. And Dioxine Purple, which is a favorite of mine. Followed up by primary blue. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to use this worn penny or if I'm just going to use gold. I'll probably use gold. And then, of course, as always, a little bit of white. For this pour, I'm going to be using Flow Troll by Flood. This is a pouring medium. It uh, makes the paints nice and fluid so that they move around your canvas. Now, I've seen most artists that are on YouTube doing tutorials recommend using Flow Troll because, one, it's inexpensive um, and it seems to get good results. However, um, I've done the water method before and I don't really see a difference between just adding plain water or using the Flow Troll. But since this was my very first acrylic pour, I'm going to be using the Flow Troll just to make sure everything comes out correct. Now I'm going to demonstrate exactly how to mix your paints with your pouring medium, whether you're using Floetrol or just plain water or some other brand of, you know, store-bought specific from the art store because there are brands like Deco Art makes, you know, a pouring medium and whatnot. So uh, basically the idea is you want to get your paints fluid enough to where that they just run right off of your stirring stick. So I'm going to demonstrate that right here. You're going to also want to make sure that you just add little tiny bits at a time until you get to the right consistency. There really is no um, exact measuring here. I just sort of eyeball it. So it's not like a one to two or a two to three parts or you know anything like that. But here you can see me stirring it up and just kind of testing it. And at first you're going to be like with the flow troll, I was like, what? It's screwing up my color, but the more that I stirred it, the more that the color kind of came back, which was, you know, kind of a relief, but kind of weird anyways. Um, you can see just stirring, stirring, and then you can see how it sort of just runs right off the stick. Now, this is what you don't want. See how it's sort of drip, drip, drip? That's not fluid enough, so we're going to have to add in a little more of our pouring meat, and we need some more of that flow trawl in there. And then I'm going to mix it up again and just keep testing this until, you know, we get, you know, a good result. And you're going to want to make sure that all of your paints are right about the same consistency. And it really helps if you use, you know, all of one brand because each brand of paint or each, you know, even each type of paint can be... Uh, kind of different in their consistency so use all deco art or all folk art or whatever unless you get really really good at mixing your paints and then you can start mixing brands but you know for a first pour i just recommend sticking with one brand and you know get the cheap paints the you know little craft art paints that you might get it like michael's joann's or hobby lobby then you know they come in the little two ounces and they're only like a dollar something but now you can see the um the consistency of the paint is becoming more and more fluid as I add more flow trawl and we're getting closer to the results that we need. Now that you've seen how I mix up my paints and add in my pouring medium, we're going to speed things up so you can see me mix all the colors.
Now here we are down in my studio. I've laid down the bubble wrap, I stuck my canvas on top of it, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to actually trace around the outer edge of this thing, so that way I can get an idea as to where I need to lay my paints down on the bubble wrap. So now that I've got the outline of the canvas, this will allow me to know exactly where to put my paints. So that way I'm not putting, you know, too small of an area. And then when I go to put my canvas back down, there's not enough paint on there. And, you know, cause we want to make sure that we get a good, um, full coverage of the paint to the canvas. The method I'm going to be using today is just pouring the paint in small little V's just back and forth, up and down, kind of overlapping the different colors until the entire area that the canvas is going to be on top of is full. And you can see me doing that right here. Um, you know, I kind of started out not really great, but then I got the hang of it and, you know, it turned out okay. So we're going to kind of fast forward to speed this up so you can see me putting down all the paint colors. Now all we need to do is flip the canvas over and put it down on our paints. Now one thing you need to make sure is make sure that you press down on all areas of the canvas. I made the mistake on my very first one of not putting enough pressure down and you know some of the areas didn't get paint adhered to it and I pulled it up and I was like oh no that's a disaster. So I had to completely redo it so just make sure that you're putting pressure down evenly across the whole canvas. And make sure that it's light pressure because if you press too hard, you're more than likely just going to squish the paint out and it's just going to be a smeary mess. So here's the initial result. What do you guys think? This is my very first bubble wrap acrylic pour. I actually think for a first time, this isn't too bad. It came out pretty nice. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about my very first acrylic bubble wrap pour. When doing a bubble wrap pour, always make sure to have a second canvas handy because you never know, you might come out with enough paint left over to do a second one and the results will be completely different. And here is the second one I did. So leave a comment down below, which one do you like better? Do you like the first one or the second one? I'm kind of leaning toward the second one as being my favorite. And just in case you didn't realize, you're looking at both of these paintings when they're still wet. They haven't fully dried yet. Now we just need to wait about a week for the paint to cure and dry, and then we can begin the process of putting on the top coat. This time I'll be using Art Resin. This is a two-part epoxy that you have to mix together in equal amounts. Now I know I didn't show this process, but always make sure to wipe down your paintings with a damp cloth or a tiny little bit of dish soap. Be kind of careful, but you want to make sure to get all the residue and all the oils off so that your top coat sticks properly. For this epoxy, you're going to want to mix two parts equal and mix and mix and mix and mix and you don't have to be real vigorous with it. Just kind of go nice and slow and you're going to want to read the instructions and follow them exactly because if you don't, it will come out a disaster. Make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom as you mix to get everything thoroughly mixed. As for how much epoxy to mix up, I just sort of guessed, but it's always better to have a little more than not enough. Now that I've got my epoxy mixed, we're down here in my studio once again. And this other painting in here was just one that I needed to have top coated, so I just sort of threw it in the video. One important thing about the room that you're in while you're doing your epoxy pour, make sure that it's a nice even temperature right around 75 degrees. If it's too hot, it won't work. If it's too cold, it won't work. You'll get cracking, you'll get all kinds of undesired results. Also make sure to have something handy nearby that you can cover your paintings with, whether it's a cardboard box that you prop over top of it, just to keep the dust particles out of your epoxy pour while it's curing. Now it's time to finally pour on the epoxy resin. And really all you do is just pour it all on. And then we're gonna take a uh, spatula or any kind of a flat object that's kind of wide. And we're going to spread out all the epoxy all over the uh, artwork 
or canvas. Now you've got quite a bit of working time here. Uh, it's not like you're, oh my gosh, it's setting up real fast and you know, you've got roughly right around 30 minutes or so before you can't work with it anymore. And that's it, you know, kind of in my experience. The instructions on the bottle said you had about 45 minutes of working time, but I thought that was kind of kind of pushing it a little bit. I could kind of tell it was beginning to set up a little bit and become kind of gooey and not, you know, kind of fluid anymore. One thing to know about epoxy resin, it is self-leveling. So make sure that your canvas is on a completely flat and level surface because if it's not, your epoxy will run to one side and you'll have uneven spots where it's thicker in some areas than others. You know, my first try at this, I did have that problem and I was like, no, no, it's like, you know, kind of uneven throughout the surface of the entire artwork. Um, another thing, if your canvas is larger, make sure to have the center supported because the epoxy resin is heavy and it will tend to make the canvas sag. Um, this has kind of led me to not like doing artwork or at least um, pours like this on canvas just because they tend to have that sagging problem. So I'm going to be switching to some form of artboard or solid, something more like wood. Also, make sure to have your canvas elevated, whether it's on a block of wood or, you know, some stands. That way there's area underneath the canvas so that you can get all the little drips and that way it doesn't stick to your table or the floor or whatever you have it on. Another good practice is to tape off the back. That way, if you get any runs underneath, it won't transfer to the back of your artwork. Now that we have all of our epoxy spread evenly across the canvas, you're going to start to see it running over the sides. Of course, it doesn't do this evenly, so you're going to want to take some of the uh, epoxy that has dripped onto, in my case, the tarp, and scoop it up and just start putting it all along the edges and make sure to spread it out nice and even. And then you're going to want to go back after you've got everything nice and even and get all the drips from the underside of your canvas. You're going to have to check back about every 30 minutes to get the new drips until the resin stops flowing. If you don't do this, you're going to have all these drips that you'll have to wait until the resin has fully cured and then you'll have to go back afterward and sand them off. And let me tell you, it's not fun, especially on a canvas. Now, immediately after getting all the epoxy spread all over your canvas exactly the way you want it and you know, everything looks nice and level. You're going to want to come back with one of these little mini torches. You can also use a heat gun, but just anything that doesn't put air. You don't want like a blow dryer or anything like that. And you're going to want to not touch the canvas with the flame or the heat, but just sort of wave it over top. And you'll see this is to get rid of any bubbles or any little bits of dust that might have gotten in the epoxy while you were pouring it. Um, you know, and you can, if you get like a little speck of hair or dust, you can actually briefly, really quickly touch the flame to it and it will incinerate it and get rid of it. When you're doing this, make sure that the flame doesn't come into contact directly with your artwork and make sure to continually make movements over top of it. Don't hold it in one spot and you'll begin to see all the bubbles popping. Once you're satisfied with the way everything looks, now it's time to cover it with your cardboard or your large box or container and let it set for at least 48 to 72 hours. I say the longer the better. You can never leave it set too long just to be on the safe side. So here it is after 48 hours. You can see it's super glass-like. It's just amazing looking. And I am going to take it outside and do some... Uh, shots of it in the sunlight so you can just see exactly how shiny this is and mirror-like. So here are the final results. I wanted to show you what it would look like on a wall in a room setting and as well as outside in the bright sunlight just so you could kind of get an idea as to just how glass-like this finish is.
both of these paintings along with all of my artwork that I do in the future will be up on my Etsy page. You can find a link for that down in the description box below if you would like to purchase either of these or any of my other artwork that I have up for sale. All proceeds from the sale of this artwork goes back into helping me to buy more art supplies for future projects as well as to help run this channel. Thank you everyone for watching my very first acrylic art pour video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I do content like this each and every week. If you liked it, then please hit that subscribe button, smash the bell icon, and I'll see you on another episode of Try This.